and welcome back to Around the Campfire with AmeriCamp, the ultimate summer camp podcast. I'm Laura. I'm Rob. And we are here today to chat you through some of our top tips for camp for this summer. Um, this is applicable to first timers. If you've been to camp before, yeah. um, you might know some of these tips, but um, just to kind of make sure everybody's all prepped for this. Yeah, year. definitely. I mean, I'm going back to camp for my third summer and there's still some stuff that I feel like I need to learn yeah. beforehand. So yeah, hopefully this is useful for anyone that's going to camp this summer. Absolutely. So we'll start um, with some tips for before you get to camp. Yes. Then some for when you're there and then some sort of after camp too. So to start us off, the, the question that we get most is like, mm-hmm. what should I pack? Obviously, it's it's it, overwhelming. I do get why we get asked it because like you are going somewhere for three months. It's probably a long yeah. amount of time you are going to spend away. So you feel like, how am I going to pack my life into this backpack yes. or suitcase? Um, but probably start off with one of the first tips is you do not need as much stuff as you probably think you do. Yeah. Um, when you're at camp, um, there's such a thing as like camp chic, like a camp style. And that style is not all your nice clothes or everything you own. Yeah. Um, so what I did my first summer, I bought every nice thing I had um, and it just was not needed at all. Um, so maybe just been like a few tops, a few things of shorts, a couple pairs of trainers, yeah. um, stuff you don't mind getting muddy in or like running around in the heat in all day. And maybe one nice outfit for like a nice night out or yeah. something afterwards. Um, but I did most of my shopping at Walmart when I was there, just buying stuff to add to it. Um, and that was more than enough to last me the entire summer. Um, so make sure not to pack our suitcase too much and yeah. Pretty yeah sure. absolutely i think that is my number one tip for people mm-hmm. is without so once you've packed take away probably about 30 yeah, percent yeah both years i went certainly my first year i had so much stuff that i never wore yeah definitely. and then i was like is it worth taking lugging this around the medicam for me to <laughs> still not wear but yeah. we were getting stuff as you say like at walmart at marshall's like which is like tk max um and also just like camp merch as mm-hmm. well so we yeah. got like a lot of camp t-shirts that had like hoodies mm-hmm. and like a jacket and stuff like that as well so yeah. i think being realistic with what you want and there's if there's stuff that you're like oh my god this is my nicest pair of jeans or this is my nicest t-shirt or pair of shoes or whatever don't take it because it's not going to be needed nice. i blame my mother for how much stuff i bought the first <laughs> summer because she's she very much like well you're gonna need this in the calls and what about this very specific situation yeah. that might happen and because I didn't know, I was yeah. like, well, she must know. Um, yeah. I think one thing you do need a lot of when you're there was just stuff like socks, little yes. things like that. Yes. Um, it's not a thing you probably consider. You probably think, oh, I'll have five pairs, wash them. You go through them so yeah. quickly when you're in that environment. Like, yeah. Socks. So take 30% away from everything, but add and about 40% of socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. million <laughs> pairs of socks. Like, go to Primark, yeah. buy lots of socks. They go missing everybody will do the, their laundry yeah. you'll come back with like three pairs or three socks and just not a single pair between them yeah. like, you can't have too many socks that's, say. that's what I mean, it's the kind of thing you need to wear fresh each day, maybe yes. a pair of shorts you can get away with for like another day or something but yeah. now nah, when you run around all day in the heat you need Absolutely. something like that um, quite often even just yeah. a couple of pairs of socks a day honestly no honestly like <laughs> yeah. when I was a sports coach in my camp and I used to have to do costume changes like I was like Beyonce or something like a gig <laughs> of just like swapping out outfits yeah. just to keep it like myself like you know fresh with the kids yeah. I guess, you know in the best way absolutely another yeah. thing that we would recommend taking um, is an extension cable mm-hmm. it means that you only need one like actual uk to us adapter and you've got like four or five different plugs it's especially useful yeah. if you've got like your phone and your apple watch and like headphones and stuff Everything that need charged yeah. like that's that sort of good um especially because my cabin at camp only had one plug-in for yeah. electricity and um, obviously just for the counselors because the camp is in one of the electronics um and we did not have the extension cable at first so it was me and my counselors fighting about it's my chain charge for yeah. it's my uh, so yeah just something that can just settle those little arguments yeah. that might pop up in those regards in terms of other electronics yeah. other than your phone and potentially like a watch or something that mm-hmm. you might have um don't bring a yeah. hair dryer don't bring straighteners like anything no, like uh, that video game consoles yeah. that's quite a popular one it's not worth it it's could get damaged all that stuff as well but also hair dryers in the u.s in the uk and hair dryers in the u.s are different voltages mm-hmm. so it won't work as well and yeah. um, we had someone <laughs> bring a hair dryer and um, that i used and that honestly would have been easier like yeah blowing my hair dry like myself <laughs> like that is, is it that week the airport i never honestly, really used it, it was it was awful like yeah. it was it was pointless using it because it just mm-hmm. didn't 
um, it didn't have the same yeah. voltage. So it just That's what I was thinking. That takes up probably quite a bit of space for stuff absolutely. in a suitcase. Yeah. yeah. So um, and again, camp style. I used to just wear bandanas all the time. <laughs> after a while, so my hair it didn't really matter. Work yeah. like so. It probably applies to a lot of other people. Going yeah. To camp. As as well, like yeah. I found with because of how yeah. hot it was that if I washed my hair, it was dry within about yeah. thirty minutes anyway. So it wasn't. Anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, just whilst we're on technology, so I mentioned four of our video game consoles. Um. When you're around campers, where the whole point is to disconnect them from yeah. the technology, um, so we had a council that bought like a Nintendo Switch. It was fun during orientation with the other counselors having a game of Mario Kart or something like that. Um, but as soon as the kids saw that he had a video game console, yeah. then it actually sort of disengaged them from going out yeah, into yeah, Matrix. Yeah. They're like, technology, I haven't seen this in five days. Let me play a game. Um, and it caused issues. So yeah, enjoy sort of disconnecting is yeah, the best way absolutely. obviously you have your phone to keep in contact with stuff and a bit of alone time and that but enjoy just the time away and just like yeah. stop staring at screens all day and yes. just connect again to yourself and nature it's, it's so like therapeutic mm-hmm. but just like resetting yeah. like not being on your phone all the time is great yeah definitely um another tip um that we that i recommend that we recommend is if you're bringing toiletries that you definitely will need so like um, deodorant is really yeah. expensive to buy in the US for some reason. No, I, can't I, say, no idea why. I don't have no idea why it's so expensive. Yeah. It's like six dollars for something that we can get for, for like, like a pound yeah. or something like that. Yeah, what's crazy. Um, so I would bring as much of that as you can, but like <laughs> for things like shampoo and conditioner, unless you've got really specific ones mm-hmm. that you need to use or that your hair will fall out with yeah. it or whatever, <laughs> um, then just buy it whilst you're there. That's yeah, because my camp we had a shared uh, council bathroom between like ten of us and we just put money into a pool and then whoever's day off went to Walmart stocked up on <laughs> stuff like that. Shit. Very yeah, very communal. Might yes. not work for everybody. Um, but again it saved me A having to sort of my liquids when I reached the airport for yeah. security and be lugging it all over. So, I feel like yeah. that's a very like boy thing to do. It was oh yeah, we were like a four in one situation <laughs> yes. where it covered every aspect of it. Um, but it worked it worked perfectly for us. So yeah, yeah it might work Excellent. for us, yeah. And um, this the other thing yeah. that people will absolutely need at camp, but we would recommend buying it when you're in the US is mm. bug spray. Yes. You can buy bug spray in the UK, but because it's like a total different breed of mosquitoes, it's just not the same. It, like it doesn't give it doesn't work, the, yeah. The, uh, the amount of protect, protection that you need. Yeah. Um, so it's not sort of working. I think I think as well, like we did use bug spray. Our campers were obsessed with using bug spray because at first yeah. they were scared of the bugs, so they would spray it everywhere and we would be like, This is not needed. Um, um, but yeah, it's one of those things that's handy to have, but I feel like, again, just buy it when you need it when yeah. you're out there, it's not, not I, essential. I, like, could have, yeah. at the end of my time at camp, I could have scraped layers of bug spray. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Oh my god, I, yeah. I get bitten really bad, though, like, okay. it's just yeah. not good. And so yeah. every single day I was dousing myself yeah. with bug spray. But we had to do it outside the cabin because it was just that. <laughs> like, like strong, yeah, yeah that's smell. Strong, yeah, yeah, we had that as well. well. Yeah. Um, but like similar to that, one thing you're definitely going to need, but you can probably buy over there is just sun cream. Yeah. Um, the sun is hot in America, more yes. so than the UK. Um, I myself, I didn't expect it to get up to like late 30s, 40 degrees some days, and especially being in New York, yeah. which is like East Coast, normally seems a little bit cool in like Texas and the South. Um, because of my complexion, let's say, my strawberry blonde hair, I did get sunburned quite badly yeah. um, because I was applying it maybe once a day, but I wasn't sort of reapplying it or keeping yeah. up with it. So in the same way, your counsellors, or your counsellors, sorry, your campers, you check for them to be sun creamed, um, please check for yourself. You will get a tan at some point, yeah. but it's no point burning when you first start. Absolutely, so, absolutely not. Uh, stock up on the good stuff as well when you're at Walmart or anywhere yeah, else. So, definitely, like yeah. factor 50 plus is the way yeah, to go. Definitely, um, yeah, definitely. And certainly, again, pale skin, so I <laughs> can't recommend I was, I was very jealous that the has got a glorious tan in yeah. There's no issue for them. They could I just mean, be there all day. But... I did get a bit of a tan. I had yeah. um, my Casio watch on all time. Oh, you had the tan line, the, yeah. Of course I had the tan line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was not great when I got back from camp and didn't want to be cutting about with the Casio one. Yeah, anyway. no, definitely, definitely. Um, but that brings us on to another actually really yeah. good point. Something that a lot of people at my camp didn't bring was a water bottle and uh, a watch, mm-hmm. both of which are like almost Vital, yeah. ex- essential um, whilst you're at camp. Water bottle, obviously, if you're like just kind of going about camp all day, you need to be hydrated. You- yeah, that the phrase we had that was placid on our uh, wall in our like eating room, whatever the dining room was, just hydrate or dehydrate. Yeah, which is a stupid phrase, but it yeah. works so well in camping. That like again, we used to have water fountains at every single place for the campers to get it. Uh, you drink more water than you've ever yeah. drank in your life when you're at camp. Especially definitely get one around. of the ones, um, not the plastic ones, but no. like a chili bottle uh, yeah, or definitely. hydro flask is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Like that <laughs> everyone is, in our office has hydro flasks. Yes, they work perfectly. Not sponsored, but yeah, like. Yeah. 
that Maybe would be one great. Day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Powder flasks are great. And then yeah. you can put loads of stickers on them and you just look cool. Yeah, yeah. And the other, sorry to go on about hydro flasks, <laughs> <laughs> but the other good thing about them is yeah. because they've got the little handle and mm-hmm. uh, you can carry them about. Yeah. But you can also tie a friendship fresh. bracelets to them. Oh, I didn't and, think about that. Yep, yeah, this is what we used to do. We used to yeah. sit with our hydro flasks between our knees and Tie yeah. the friendship bracelets around it and then like do it like whilst we were like in meetings and that's a really I did not think of that as well yeah great. that's a good um, idea so yeah definitely hydro yeah. flask or um or yeah. alternatives <laughs> alternative yes. all, all that available yeah um and yeah. and a watch yes. just like a good like casual just, yeah water. anything just gonna run all day a good battery um because a camp you normally always have your phone on you all the time yeah. you might be outdoors in nature as part of an activity and you gotta realize what time the activity finishes and where you need to get your campus there yeah. and you don't want to be a situation of like your campus are to the activity just has knock on effects um Absolutely. so yeah a watch is a must definitely. and another thing to bring yeah. is like a journal or something like, yeah, a like something book, yeah. that you can keep all of your little mementos in yeah. that's what i did in my first I'm, year my friend got me yeah. a um a specific one to take so that I could like document or summer apart. <laughs> that's um, really cute. That's something I wish I did. Some of the yeah. councillors were a lot more organised than me and had that and they kept like um when we're in New York, like the subway cars, the metro cars, yeah. our ticket to like a Yankees game or even like the receipt from a diner. Yeah. And it's always been five years later, I wish I could have the nostalgia trip yeah. for looking back on. Um so yeah, definitely bring that and then when you get back to the UK People would be fascinated, like yeah. if someone bought in, like, oh, this is when I went to, be like, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Really good tip. Um, sort of the opposite side of that, um, make sure to pack stuff from home as well, like home comfort or something to show where you're from. Um, my camp that I'm going to this summer, Breezemont, is doing like your favourite sports team day or something from home mm-hmm. day, where it gives you a chance to show off like where you're from, your culture anything like that and it just helps having those little reminders at home when you're out yeah, there um absolutely. so for example i bought a newcastle flag and like a newcastle top when i was there i also bought like pictures of my family and stuff yeah, i was more fussed yeah. about remembering about newcastle <laughs> yeah. united obviously um and that was like a good conversation starter the campuses asked after it and they all signed the flag which yeah. i still have to this day um i imagine didn't you bring like a scotland flag, I did bring a scotland yeah, flag. Yeah. um i had a scotland flag that before i went to camp and um, everybody like my whole family signed yeah, it yeah. my friends signed it so i had this oh, before like, you went, before I went oh, camp, right, okay, that's cool. so i had my scotland flag that i took with me yeah. that had like little sort of good luck messages and, really and all cute. this yeah and um, from everybody at home so it was like a nice little home comfort and then yeah. um i had an american flag that i got everybody at camp to sign oh. so i've got Got one that's, that's really, got that's all really of my Scotland idea. people, yeah. and then one that's got all of my sort of American friends and camp friends. That's such a good. I didn't even think about that. That's such yeah. a good idea, actually. Um, but I did. Um, I did also bring my Scotland top um, as yeah. my football shirt to for like international day yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So that was quite cute too. Yeah. Um, also, as well, in terms of like food and drink and stuff, um, I didn't bring anything to America before I went. Once I realised that I couldn't have cups of tea in the same way or I missed certain snacks, I had to get my parents, who were delightful, to send it over to me in very expensive <laughs> packaging. Yeah. Um, so maybe for in a 200 bag of Yorkshire tea or something, yeah, if you're going to miss it that definitely. much, you'd be absolutely fine with that. Um, as well as sort of yeah. packing um, something just to think about before you go, yeah. is obviously we've got our Amen Camp community group, mm-hmm. but also just getting involved in group chats um, that your yeah. camp might have set up or... Um, different like Facebook groups and whatever just really getting yourself out there meeting people Definitely. before you go meeting people that are even going to different camps like it doesn't just need to be people that are only going to your yeah. camp that you can sort of engage with it can be people that will be on the same flight or maybe yeah, in a yeah. similar area that sort of thing that, yeah uh, that's what I really found beneficial my first summer is that I met I think five other people at the airport and um, we were on the same plane there was like uh, three of us were going to one camp three of us going to the other uh, but we all coordinated to stay in the same hostel and then we went yeah. out in New York for the first night together and ate peace in Central Park and it was if I didn't sort of make the effort in these groups beforehand yeah. I would have met these people and had like a really really good start to my camp experience Absolutely. of doing like a bucket list eat pizza in Central yeah. Park as soon as I got there um, and also as well it just made the whole experience a little less scary I guess yeah. like no, there's someone else beside me going through the same thing and just talking about it and quarantine and all that. Um, it was so nice yeah. as well. Like we had, I think there was maybe six of us that all, or six or seven of us mm-hmm. that were all in New York before we went to camp. Yeah. There was a few of us that were on my flight, but we met other people. And there's a picture of us in Times Square on the like very very yeah, first, first day that yeah. we arrived in the US, um, mm-hmm. where. Mm-hmm. 
we'd known each other in person for about 20 minutes no, we've got this yeah. lovely like really cute picture <laughs> together and then we recreated yeah. it at the oh, end of camp as well oh, so we've amazing. got the picture of us at the start and then us yeah. at the end and it's just it's, it's really cute like it's, a little it's one of those things like the, the five people i threw out with like i still have them all on social media yeah. i still remember all the names we do have photos together and those people i'm going to remember for yeah because it was the start of my journey and those are the people associated with it um, so yeah don't be afraid to sort of put yourself out there in these groups maybe ask the stupid questions i certainly did that my first summer um and then you feel a lot more prepared and sort of ready yeah, to go for that so. Um, so moving on to actually some advice for when you are in the us yes. when you get to camp um just to, to make sure that you're doing your job really well, but also to make sure that you're having a great time whilst you're there yeah, too. Um, I think our top bit of advice is just to be involved in everything, mm-hmm. anything possible. Put yourself out there. It's those counsellors that do the best, that are the best with their kids, that make the most friends. It's the ones that are actively trying to yeah, be involved definitely. in opportunities that are having the best the best sort of time I think yeah um I think it's what well, when you first get to camp it can seem a bit overwhelming mm-hmm. about like I know I stepped off the bus and they immediately got us to do like get to know your games yeah which obviously in hindsight I can understand the importance of it at first I was like well this is a lot of people to like try and do a game for um and I sort of was like held back a little bit um but you do see the difference of people who just sort of get themselves out there, introduce themselves to as, as many people as possible, start a conversation with as many people as possible. Um, the important thing to remember is that everyone's in the same situation. Yeah. Everyone has made the effort to be there, so they're going to be probably the, a similar sort of person to you if they've gone through all this whole process. You have something to sort of talk about, of just like, hey, how are you? I'm so-and-so, where are you from? What do you think about camp? And people, people love it when you go to them first as well. Yeah. They really appreciate the fact if you made the effort. Yeah. Um, and again, it's good to make friends with as many people as possible yeah. at camp and just getting involved because it makes the whole transition process to camp life a lot easier. Definitely. Yeah. Like the people that, like when I think back to first arriving mm-hmm. at camp, um, like we, we, we arrived at mm-hmm. night and the bus took us from New York up to Massachusetts um, and we got picked up maybe about 10 p.m. Yeah. from the tiny little town that my camp is yeah. next to and we got driven into camp pitch black couldn't see anything it was a bit scary <laughs> yeah, actually I can imagine. Uh, our luggage was like left on the basketball court as as we got taken to the dining hall mm-hmm. just like here's some food yeah. eat this and then we're gonna go to bed pretty much so it was it was so bizarre like it was so yeah. like a situation that I've never really no, before, definitely. Yeah. But I didn't really have I, control over what I was felt happening. like a kid again at the first yeah, day of school. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then, so we, we'd we finished eating, and then we just were shown, like, here's yeah. your cabin, go to bed, we'll see you in the morning. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. It, was, it was quite jarring, actually, it that, was, that yeah. first initial experience. But it was the people at that point that were like, oh, well, I don't want, like, what's happening? Like, it yeah. was those people that didn't really settle into just rest first. Yeah. That didn't really do as well like the next again morning people will be complaining like oh i didn't get that much sleep or oh, like yeah i i wanted a day off before we start like all this <laughs> sort of stuff it was the people yeah. that at that point were like right cool let's go that had the most successful summers yeah. that, that returned year on year yeah definitely like I, that sort of thing i think as well like you said when you first get there you are going to be fighting against different parts of new environment yeah. uh, jet lag tiredness and stuff Absolutely. but if you form sort of like we're in this together yeah. i guess at the beginning with people then that's what's going to power you yeah. through it because if you make an isolating experience you're going to be struggling more against sort of settling in and yeah. doing all that um i found just speaking to returners returners love talking about camp they wouldn't be there again yeah. if they didn't love it and they love speaking to first timers about like this is how it works or give you advice and stuff so if you can maybe identify returners or they might come up to you yeah. they're a good resource to help you through those first few Absolutely. days I think yeah. this is, I don't know where I've picked up this phrase, but it's one that always sticks in my mind, yeah. is your bearing shapes your fate. I've like, never heard that in my life. No, no, it's, it's, a, really, it's a good phrase. Um, but it's yeah. like that sort of sense of like, you you yeah. will make your, your environment your environment. If, if you yeah. want to make it a bad one, you will. If you want to make it a good yeah, one, you will. So like having that sort of perspective on something okay, I'm open to this being a bit different to start with. I'm open to this mm-hmm. just being total culture shock. Yeah. Will will help you like make that a successful thing rather than getting there and being like, oh, this isn't good. Or I, this yeah. isn't maybe exactly what I expected on my first day. That will sort of impact the way that yeah. you like, see the time, your time. Yeah, when you're there, definitely. Um, yeah, other tips for Welsh at camp. 
Um, this is a tip that you <laughs> you've kind of brought to light, but um, is making Original. friends with American staff. Yeah, so yeah. I know it turns American staff um, again because camps obviously in America they are going to be more acclimatized to it. A lot of them grew up in a camp environment. They may have been campers themselves. Families might work to camp, um, so they sort of know how it all works before yeah. orientation might even start. Um, so great to speak to you for those resources and also sort of the practical side of if you're on like a day off they might have a car yes. to drive you around in or they might be able to stay at their houses and save a bit of money and stuff and they sort of help welcome you into American culture in the same way that I think if an American came to where you live in the UK you probably want to embrace them and show Absolutely. them the best of British they're more than willing to show you the best of America as well yeah my friend Bree um, from from my well, both years at mm-hmm. camp actually um, who I love so dearly yeah. she had um, a car she's American she had yeah. a car um, on her time off even if she wasn't off on the same day she'd be like yeah take my car like yeah. we'll go where you want to go That's so um, nice. but we went to like quite a few different places that we were able to travel whilst we were at camp as well like we yeah. able to on our time off we went down to Rhode Island we went to like Cape Cod and stuff like oh, that amazing. which we wouldn't have been able to do Dude, we've had access, if we yeah. didn't have Bree's car <laughs> <laughs> but to, to, to Paid oh, back this. after she um after we'd finished camp she yeah. came and visited Scotland so uh, and then you paid it back yeah, you drove around you gave her around, so. yeah obviously um don't take advantage of their generosity yeah. like respect yeah. it be nice to them and yeah they'll pay it back in uh, bucket loads I guess so, yeah, <laughs> yes definitely. absolutely um so other sort of bits of advice <laughs> when you're with the children obviously camp is for the kids like yes yeah, yeah. you're there to have a week, to be having a great time um to be kind of having your summer of a lifetime but in essence it's there for the children so yeah. making sure that you're forming like good connections with the kids making sure that they're getting involved in everything as well yeah, as you um making like really quite personable bonds with these kids as well like they will like kids just will yeah. lap you up they'll they'll love you so much yeah definitely they'll definitely. want to be your best friend <laughs> um and if you give that back to them like those are the counselors that excel yeah, so much definitely um i think as well with the kids it can be easy to sort of see them as a group so making sure you sort of get to know them as individuals some kid might come straight up to you first day and tell you everything they know about you yeah. like everything they know about themselves and tell you every single thing some kids will be nervous of the environment as well and you maybe have to ask them questions to get know more, know more about them and um, so make sure you sort of take the right approach with with yeah. each kid if one's being really quiet or one's being really loud or aggressive yeah. uh, just to make sure you're speaking to them as people um also as well do your best to make sure the kids bond with each other you might get a cabin of six kids that have never met each other in their life and they're like who, who are these people so like games are really yes. the main currency of camp yeah. of breaking stuff like you can bet your bottom dollar that if you have a game that a kid love they just want to keep playing it and yeah. playing it and playing it and it will really help with the bonding aspect of it and um, so i know when i first got to my cabin i literally had like a, a old tennis ball i found and i was like right let's play a game if everyone say your name and where you're from in new york and throw the ball back and forth we all get to know each other and then I remember some kids were like, oh, I'm from there, do you know, blah, 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 do you go to this? And it helped their bonding. Yeah. And if your kids get along, that's going to make your job so oh, yes. much easier. Yes. Um, so as much as you're bonding with the kids and you're bonding with the counsellors, making sure the campers become yeah. best mates was going to make the summer even better. Absolutely. So. And it's it's realising those sort of strengths in kids yeah, as well. Definitely, like yeah, definitely. Like seeing the, the kid that might be a little bit more shy or mm-hmm. might be quite quiet or whatever, seeing where where they kind of fit into yeah. like the cabin and like okay maybe they're a little bit quiet but maybe they can yeah. help you make the like camp schedule or the cabin schedule yeah, and, and things like that like giving them res- I was going to say giving them chores but like giving them <laughs> responsibilities and like making them yeah, feel yeah. quite empowered no, um, especially the younger ones I'd say definitely um, I remember there was one kid my first summer he's called like Victor he just sat and read the whole time and he wouldn't get involved as much with the cabin games and then we were like oh Victor, what well, do you want to lead today? And he's like, oh, I'm really good at origami. Oh. And these kids were like, I've never done origami, don't know what it is. So he literally, we all got paper and he literally taught the whole cabin how to do it. That's and so after sweet. that, everyone was like, oh, this is so cool. Could like, can you show me how to do this? And it became like just a, a game around the That's kids so of like, sweet. what can you make? Um, and then that sort of boosted his confidence because yeah. we allowed him to shine in an area he knew and he got to show off to the kids his own knowledge instead of, you know, what they already knew themselves yeah. like he wasn't big into basketball or sport or anything whilst that's what the kids were focused on so getting those campers to show themselves to each other really did help the bonding yeah. process as well yeah um, another just top tip to have um is just have on your i was gonna say on your person but in in your in mind, your mind yeah. um, like games to play yes in emergencies it not emergencies as such just, but in like just, if a lesson is running late and you've got yeah. still 10 kids to look after or if there is um, some like 
whether that you need yeah, to stay inside, this, like that yeah. sort of thing. Just I, having something to do with kids <laughs> we, is great. They spent, during orientation, they made the counsellors play these games like every yeah. single break or anything. And we thought, oh, why are they making us play these games? Like, why can't we just chill? And it's like, so you remember them when yeah. the kids come. I have 10 games that I could play right now yeah. with anybody in this office and keep yes. meditating and for songs a while. too. Songs yes. too. And just like, just little tricks. Yeah. Like, I've brought them back home and talked to my friends as well. Um, but it's better than having kids disengaged. Like, kids should always, if it's not like a designated chill time, sort of do need to be simulated to, yeah. to keep focused and get in that camp mindset. Um, so the games you learn at orientation or returners will tell you, or we did like a lot of middles and stuff as well. Yeah. That was really popular at my yeah. camp. Um, they're going to be valuable by yeah. the time the kids Definitely. come. Definitely. So. Like there, there is quite a lot of periods throughout the day or times throughout the day where, mm. where kids just need entertain for like five minutes yeah. and if you in that five minutes don't yeah. have something for them to be doing it will be the longest and five minutes that's what of i mean the day. and like, then it gets to the point where the kids wanted to play the games yeah. even when they're meant to be relaxing like exactly. and they'll have contests with each other and stuff yeah. and yeah those games are as good as the activity sometimes in my mind absolutely so, they're so fun and um, so some other tips uh, keep your cabin clean yes. keep your areas clean it's just it's- worth it, it it's like, easier said than done when you've yeah. got kids there um but if you set the example um of like maybe keeping your area clean if you're if you're in the same cabin as them also as well like setting the rules about how you're going to keep it clean and yes. the rules of the cabin are very important getting the kids involved in leading them nicely down a direction that's all the rules you might have in your mind but making them seem like their decision is really yeah. important and you can sort of point to it like oh well you guys all signed this saying that you're going to clean your cabin between these times we agreed this it, it helps them if they can refer back to what they previously yeah. said to do it um, and yeah just a clean cabin is a happy life and if you get inspections and stuff then you've got yeah. no issues about it so. exactly um, also um, everything some things not everything some things will feel like the end of the world on Sunday <laughs> yeah, but sometimes so you just need to have a bit of perspective on things yeah. um, like if like Juliet told a story last week about um, or the last one yeah, of the last podcast, podcasts yeah. about um some of the girls in her cabin writing a list of why they didn't like this other camper, oh. which was like a really big thing yeah. at the time. But also just like in situations like that, like don't make it like a big thing. Like just don't make a mountain yeah, out of the yeah. There we go. Because um, things that you think yeah. will be dramatic and tragic at the start of summer, you'll have forgotten about by like... Yeah, definitely as well. <laughs> and similar to the like, if you feel, especially if it's your first time, like you haven't caught with a situation before, go and speak to your staff yeah. members. Go and speak to returners, leadership, um, and they'll probably give you a good way of sort of yeah. guiding through it. Because Absolutely. if you're there for the first time and the kids haven't fallen out, you're yeah. like, we can never recover from this. Kids forget stuff, like, yeah. they recover, they move on. They, exactly. Yeah, like, it's just about guiding them through in, in terms of, like, you're, when you're there, you're doing a job, and nobody that I know yeah. has ever done a job and got everything right no, 100% exactly, yeah. of the time, like, straight away. Like, yeah. you're there, like, you're going to be learning in these situations mm-hmm. as well. So rely on those that have that little bit more yeah. experience that have been to camp before that have that sort of leadership experience because they ultimately are there to make sure that you're having yeah. a good time and that you're sort of doing your job well as well. So rely on that experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's great. A lot of the experience <laughs> that all of these people have racked up over the years. And again, and again anyone at camp is happy to speak about camp and they yes. will give you all the time in the world to exactly. teach you how to solve the we problem. We literally so. spoke about camp so much that we've had to turn it into a podcast. podcast. Yeah, that's what <laughs> so, I mean. And, it's, yeah. Yeah, and a full-time job. So. Yes. Well, this is the thing, um, yeah. another sort of thing to think about um, when you're at camp, if it's something that you're thinking... <laughs> actually I'm really enjoying this, maybe I'll come back for the yeah. second year, maybe I'll come back for two, three, four, or five, however many yeah. years. There's so much opportunity for progression within that. You don't necessarily need to come back as a camp counsellor again. There are other, like when you're at a camp, you'll see the range of jobs that are yes. available to yeah. you. Um, like Juliet's the same. I came back as, in my second year as like leadership. all leadership. Yeah, I'm going to leadership yeah. this summer. So like yeah. there's so much progression like within camp. And it's just like showing that like extra little bit of like, like dedication and yeah, like, passion like, for it. Yeah, um, definitely. And like showing people, okay, yes, I'm a bit of a hard worker. I can yeah. set, like do any challenges that you set me sort of thing. And you're getting like actual gains from yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, when you, even if you sort of want transitional skills back to full-time work in yeah. your country it's going to really stand out if you were like i led a team of this many people to look at this many children in this organization that's been going for 100 years yeah. um so those skills are going to be invaluable transfer when you get there everyone as well at leadership in my camp had sort of gone through the system like yeah. risen from like 
general counselor to all the way to camp director and um, so they know the journey they know the steps yeah. um also as well like when i first got to camp i was a little bit intimidated by leadership even though i had absolutely no reason to be they were the most lovely people on earth um, and forming those connections with them and bonds and just chatting to them um it's gonna help you if you do want to go back sort of establish it if you do want to like rise up into leadership yeah. positions so absolutely yeah. um so just that kind of brings us to some sort of things to yeah. think about post camp after, camp, after yeah. your time at camp and um, this is mostly about travel but um i think some of our sort of biggest bits of advice is just don't um like over plan your travel yeah. kind of go with the flow a bit don't think that you need to have everything planned out by week one like the best yeah. kind of time <laughs> to, to plan travels is My after sort of like I, yeah. af- I would say definitely after sort of week, week four or five yeah. then you know who your friends are <laughs> <laughs> that sounds quite like, dramatic yeah, no. <laughs> but then you know who you like you've spent a lot of time yeah. with these people you know that you want to travel with them um, and you'll find people that want to go to similar places definitely yeah. like you're not just having to okay right we're here what are we doing after camp like give it that time and go with the flow of yeah it. definitely because i know i think actually you told sorry about how the girls like pre-booked into a trip afterwards yeah. And the like amazing time on the trip, but all these connections I had for camp, they weren't exactly. able to join in. Exactly. Um, and as well, the spontaneity of camp is sometimes the best time yeah. of it. Like, oh, why don't we just book to go to New Orleans, which is what happened in my exactly. case, and we just went to New Orleans for three days. When we were traveling, my first year when we were traveling, um, I got to the like the last sort of week. I had a flight home yeah. booked from New York. Um, and we were in New Orleans actually, yeah. but we didn't really know where we were going after that. We were, <laughs> yeah. we were like booking like two days in advance. Yeah, yeah. Like we went to San Antonio, which I really recommend in oh, Texas, yeah, um, and then we went up to Austin. But we were literally like booking hostels on the way to these places. Yeah. So like you don't need to have things yeah, definitely. months in advance or anything like that. Like there is the flexibility yeah. for that. Fantastic. And um, when you're leaving camp as well, just um you probably will find that you've got stuff that you don't want to take mm-hmm. traveling and um, obviously don't just throw that away maybe no. donate it to goodwill yeah, or donate it to other camp counselors like us staff that sort of thing yeah because all the i bought a lot of extra like i said socks and uh, <laughs> walmart t-shirts yeah. that sort of thing throughout and um, which were needed for camp but when you're traveling afterwards Obviously, you're going to be in a hotel. You're probably going to run around all day in 40 degree yeah. heat. You might have access to washing. Um, so, yeah, make sure you put that stuff to good use. We had charity bags in my camp put them in there. Uh, we even gave stuff to some campers if they wanted it yeah. as well, like old merch and stuff they used to ask for. Um, so, yeah, sort of pack right at the beginning. Yeah. Gather when you're at camp and then and probably then pack right shed afterwards. shed a little bit. And, and shed a little bit before definitely. you travel afterwards, yeah. yeah. You, you want space for souvenirs and yeah, definitely, bringing yeah. stuff back. And thrift and, shopping and whatever and else. Exactly, in America, and yeah. bringing back American M&M's. Those were like, my <laughs> thing. Yeah, any like, candy. Can, Caramel yeah. M&M's to die for. Um, I'm picturing you just with a suitcase full of them. <laughs> yeah. extra, extra baggage afterwards. I'm not going to lie, pretty much was. Yeah, the caramel ones and also the peanut butter. I'll anyway, do that more, yeah. Um, the other thing is just like, don't be silly with like blowing your budget. Like, yeah. unless you have loads and loads of money, like, don't just like spend it all on like one hotel. Like, you need to make that budget yeah. sort of like stretch. Um, so like obviously live within your means or travel no, within your means definitely um, again two tips for this um, when you're on sort of a trip like this I think it's more about the connections and the place you see yeah. rather than how nice your hotel is absolutely so we did a lot of Airbnb sharing hostels that sort of thing and we got to see more places because yeah. of it um, and also again going back to make a friend with the American staff helps because then you can have a week in a, a place because the american staff at our camp were from like california or texas or florida yeah. it was sort of an adventure for them but they also flew back home and they wanted to take the uk staff with them and sort of yeah. continue the camp feeling and um, so another cheap way of saving money in as well of if you're America. if you're traveling in a big enough group like there was yeah. i think five or six of us that traveled um, in my first year mm-hmm. um but what we were able to do was just book out entire hostel rooms like when oh, it was yeah. like a six yeah bunk, also it was just, you guys. just enough of us that it was just yeah, us that's really so good. that made things quite um or quite a bit cheaper than just getting like three or four hotel rooms no, yeah, definitely well. definitely and um, also greyhound buses and flex yes. buses and um, there's <laughs> if, if you're in uh sort of new england there's peter pan bus um but also domestic flights in the u.s tend really to be quite cheap, cheap yeah um, so you can get quite good deals I, on those I really days. do recommend the buses so we in my second summer went from new orleans to florida orlando took like 20 hours but it was just yeah. like i got to go through places i got to yeah. go to like five different states there was a point where i was in like a, a what's it called like a 
bus station in Mobile, Alabama at like 2am in oh, the morning. Oh, have been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was when we were going from Nashville to New Orleans, we stopped yeah. there. It was, it was it the was, most rogue place I've ever been. It was very weird. Yeah. I was just like, there was like one little cow up and I was like, I would never would have expected I would have been here yeah. if I didn't go on this cheap, like $30 journey and yeah. see all these days and stuff. And it was just really cool, but I guess. Also, just like taking there. these opportunities, like we, we flew, we didn't fly, we drove from um, New Orleans to mm. Texas yeah. and on the way we were just like driving down the highway and there was a sign at the side of the road that was like, like, do you want to pet a baby alligator? And, and we're all like, actually, yeah, we kind of do want to pet a baby alligator. So we like, came off at this turn off, and yeah, yeah. it was just this like, do you know in catfish where they, sorry, this is tangent, yeah, go on. where they um like they do the dramatic meetups yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, random yeah, parts. Yeah, yeah. It was literally like that. <laughs> Um, and then there was this little shed that had baby alligators <laughs> in it, and we got to pet them. I so those sort of opportunities. I do question your them. like safety knowledge that you just fall on the side and just feeling off. Yes. Off, 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 off. Uh, we are going to do an after camp travel podcast yes. where we're going to go into all these stories and more. So yeah, Absolutely. if you want to hear more about random signs and baby alligators, yeah. we'll get it all on that you podcast can as well. Bet your bottom dollar that yeah. there will be so many, many, many more stories. I'm excited for that. Um, so, but those I think are our sort of main. Yes. Tips. Main tips. Yeah. Um, if there's any else, anything else that you have that you think we I think we could. It? I mean, we probably could again talk for, for yeah. ages, but I think those are the main ones to consider. Um, again, I think if you check in with your camp as well about like specific tips about what they recommend, get yourself in the group chat. That's what terms yes. what they recommend. Um, get yourself an error. And and the American community, community chat as well. Like, well, all the staff that work here are part of it. I know people going to your camp. They might have thought of something that you haven't. Um, and yep, yeah, hopefully you can use all these tips and have the best one possible. Yes. So, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah. See you. Later. Right, see you guys. Bye.